black money and terror funding. Uh, that, 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 that is what they, if now, now we come to that. They are saying fake currency, one, black money, and fake currency used for terror funding. These are the three objectives mentioned in the notification. We'll take your lordship to that. Two terrorists were killed, and on them, they, on the bodies of the terrorists, they found 2,000 rupee notes. They also found fake currency. So fake currency, fake 2,000 rupee notes. And the third one, my lord, the fake 2,000 rupee notes started surfacing within months. Because technology is neutral, my lord. If the government families were simply without money. 11 crore people stood in a queue every day to change their money. Please see 26. Yes. Now, what happens to a case with the R where the RBI does not initiate a proposal? Then should the government keep quiet? No, RBI can initiate because the R government has kindly see the section. And of the notes exchanged with the RBI, RBI's annual report says that only 0.0027% of individual currency notes were found to be fake notes. 0.0027% was found to be fake. Every note that had been returned had been accounted for by the RBI. The annual report is there. We will place all that. Therefore, Miller, the first question is, is this the way a decision can be taken? Is this the a reasonable, prudent decision-making process that you withdraw 86.4% of the currency in 24 hours and don't place those documents in the public domain? Millard, we have asked for these documents. These documents have never been placed in the public domain. 7th November, 8th November agenda note, and 8th November recommendation. That's the first question. The second question is, does 26, section 26 give you the power to do this kind of demonetization? If section 26 gave you the power, then why in 1946 and 1978 did you have to pass a separate law? Mr. Chidarambar, before going into the legalities, yes. as you understand, because yes. you are a man with great experience. No, no, I, I don't think like it. What normally, what, generally, what are the objects of this type of demonetization? They have said three things. Mm. Well, look, the objects of demonetization are rather simple. That is 46 and 78. Currency notes not in use, not in use, should be taken out of the system because it adds to the liability side on the balance sheet. Mm. Look, every currency note issue is a liability of the RBI. That's why your lordship will see that I promise to pay to the bearer of this note, 100 rupees, the governor signs it. It's a liability side. If the liabilities keep mounting by unused or unusable or disused currency, the liability side keeps on increasing. So the liabilities extinguished by demonetization. That is one object, which is a well-recognized object. The other situation in which demonetization is sorted to is when there is hyperinflation and your currency becomes worthless. For example, Millard, in some Latin American countries, they are issuing uh, the currency Argentina, earlier in uh, Zimbabwe, the currency became worthless. Uh, even a, a 100,000 rupee currency note could not buy you even a, 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 a cup of coffee. So it's completely worthless currency. You demonetize it. You demonetize it and replace it by new currency that for every 100 rupee run now, now we will give you a 100, 100 rupee note. That is, that is a legitimate objective because of external factors, domestic factors, your currency has become practically worthless. You will now completely replenish the currency. That is a second objective. Well, these are the two objectives, as far as I know, disused, unused, unusable currency to be taken out of the system and the balance sheet to be extinguished of the RBI. Second is worthless currency to be replaced by currency with worth. Well, uh, the Lordship what knows. about black money and terror funding? Uh, that, 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 that is what they, now, now we come to that. They are saying 
fake currency one black money and fake currency used for terror funding these are the three objectives mentioned in the notification we'll take your lordship through that so the fake currency eventually turned out to be 0 0.0027 negligible i mean infinitesimal absolutely negligible the second then one they said is they added corruption later but the notification only mentioned black money let's assume black money is the now black money now I've, we've got data we place that within weeks days and weeks of this demonetization income tax department tri seized unaccounted money in 2000 rupee notes the new 2000 rupee notes if i want to hold black money nothing prevents me from storing it in 2000 rupee note rather than 500 rupee note well, the three purposes of currency are well known Miller. many of your lordships may have been economics graduates three purposes of currency is one is store of value the rbi says this paper has a value of 100 rupees the store of value other is unit of account because I have to maintain accounts. I need to know what is my income, what's my expenditure. I have to maintain accounts in some way. So I maintain account in currency by saying I have 1,000 rupees in cash. I have 10,000 rupees in a bank. And the third is medium of exchange. Before currency came, it was barter. Instead of bartering A for B, we now put a value, and that is a value, and the currency mediates the transaction between the giver and the taker. These are the three purposes of, um, uh, of currency. Now take the first one, store of value. What they say is you are storing value in an unaccounted money in 500 and 1000 rupee notes. Therefore, we're going to cancel them. If you had eventually achieved your objective of getting that currency canceled, it is neither returned or you, if it's in your hand, after 30th of December, you can do nothing about it. It becomes a worthless piece of paper. But if, I, if you issue a 2,000 rupee note, in fact, it's easier for me to store value in a 2,000 rupee note than in a 500,000 rupee note. What I would require four 500 rupee notes or two 1,000 rupee notes, I'm storing my value in 2,000 rupee notes. So when the DRI and income tax conducted searches and rates, they found unaccounted money in 2,000 rupee notes. So whether that objective is achieved or not, they may have genuinely believed that the objective will be achieved. Then on fake currency, within weeks, and I'll give you the dates and places in Bandipur, two terrorists were killed. And on them, they, on the bodies of the terrorists, they found 2,000 rupee notes. They also found fake currency. So fake currency, fake 2,000 rupee notes. And the third one, a lot the fake 2,000 rupee notes started surfacing within months because technology is neutral. If the government can get the technology, the counterfeiter can also get the technology. So it is a different matter that according to us, none of the objectives were achieved, but that may be outside the purview of judicial review, whether the objective was achieved. The point I'm making is, in order to achieve these objectives, was this the method? Or did you examine alternative methods? And I will cite the judgments of um, Justice Chandrachur and Justice Ramasubramaniam for the benches that you, you are obliged to examine alternative methods of dealing with it. And after examining the alternative methods, you can arrive at a method. Yeah, did the board examine it? Did the government examine it? Did the government spell out the various methods of dealing with this menace? Did the RBI board deal, uh, address it itself? According to us, nothing was it. Nothing was played. There's no agenda. There was no agenda note. We want to see the agenda note before the board. What was disclosed to the board? Well, according to my information, it was not disclosed to the board that by demonetizing 500,000 rupee notes, 86.4 percent of the currency will be withdrawn. Well, no prudent, no prudent cabinet minister, no prudent board member will ever agree to 86.4% of the currency being withdrawn from circulation. Anyway, so the 86.4%. Yes, in terms of the value, 2,300 crore individual notes, mm -hmm. discrete notes, 2,300 crore notes, 500,000 or 2,300 crore notes, 
by value, the value was 15 lakh 44,000 crore. Mm. And as a proportion of the total currency in circulation, it is 86.4%. Mm. That was withdrawn overnight. Mm. And the horrendous consequences, your lordships may have said, many families were simply without money. 11 crore people mm. stood in a queue every day to change their money. District cooperative banks were not allowed to receive deposits or exchange notes. Mm. The entire farming community was completely at a loss. It was a sowing season, November, sowing season. Mm. They did not have money to buy fertilizer, seeds, or hire labor. Mm. Wholesale markets were shut down. Mm. Prices crashed. Mm. Now we have the data, prices crashed. Weekly fares in villages stopped. Retail outlets reported a calamitous drop in sales. Mm. Industrial hubs mm. came to a halt. Wages were not paid. And casual labor, 33% of all employed persons amounting to 15 crore are casual labor, daily labor. They were without work or without income. And the promise they made that 24,000 crore will be allowed to be withdrawn, was not honored, was not honored. Uh, that is Chief Justice Thakur's order, records that and tells them you do your best. Mm -hmm. That this kind of horrendous consequences, were they envisaged or contemplated by the RBI board or the government or the cabinet? Did they know these consequences will happen if you withdraw such a large amount from currency in circulation? So is it a proportional way, is it a proportional measure to achieve even the objectives that you set out for yourself? That is the next. The next ground is arising out of 26. Mr. Chidambaram, one question. Yes. Uh, suppose instead of 86.4%, suppose yeah. if they have withdrawn 40%, what would have happened? You yeah. had this argument? You would have. No, this argument of proportionality will be a weaker argument. I can see that. Huh. It will be a weaker argument. The argument will remain. Depends on what notes they withdraw. Huh. Well, my personal view is somebody did not even know what notes are largely in use. Mm -hmm. Somebody belonging to the uh, ages thought that 5 rupee and 10 rupee and 20 rupee notes are the ones and currently in use. That's not so. It changed long ago. The notes in circulation, which people use every day, the bulk, the overwhelming bulk was 500,000. Overwhelming, overwhelming proportion was 86.4 was 500,000. You don't withdraw 500,000 if you had, say, demonetized only the 1,000 rupee note. Maybe the impact would have been much less. But if you demonetize 500,000, mm. thinking that these are scarce notes, only very rich people have, it's a completely wrong, Miller. Mm. <laughs> Ordinary 2000 rupee notes have not withdrawn. 2000 they issued for the first time. Issued, issued. issued. Uh -huh. Which leads to the next round. Introduced. Yeah. Now, my lord. See, see the yeah. proportionality argument yeah. will have to be seen in the context of the justification for this policy. Yes. And if every the time it does not. Justification failed. No. Therefore, it, objectively, it has to be seen in the context of the justification. Absolutely. Not solely on its own uh, basis. Absolutely, my lord. If, if, even if you're placing burden on the people, if by doing this yes. drastic step, if you are achieving your objectives, they may just defend it. But the objectives were not achieved. As I am pointing out to your Lordship, 0.002% of the notes were found fake, and the, the, the black money shifted to 2,000 rupee notes. So the two objectives were not achieved. They yeah, added another this. objective. They didn't do this when they, do, when they banned this, you know, only thereafter. No, but they, according to me, you should think through the, that is why there's a board, that is why section 26 says the board must recommend, not the government issues a command to the board, will you recommend, and the board recommends within 24 hours, well, let, let us see the agenda. The experts should deliberate. There is enormous research on demonetization. There is enormous research on the impact of black money. There is enormous research on faking. You know, the most counterfeited note, I know, most counterfeited note in the world is the US one dollar. But they don't care. They say, we are the reserve currency, what does it matter? 
whether somebody counterfeits the note or not, eventually you will deposit it in our 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 banks. So if we don't care, they don't take any action against the one dollar note which is being counterfeited. If a counterfeiting was such a serious problem as my lady says, and you want to achieve it by by demobilizing or demonetizing twenty eighty six point four, then show that it has achieved the objective. No, the question really is not for your lordship to ask, if I may say with respect, did they achieve the objective? Did the RBI deliberate on this objective and then make a recommendation? Did the RBI deliberate on this objective and then make the recommendation? Uh, if, if, you, if, you, if you meet within less than 24 hours without an agenda note, without research papers, uh, what, 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 would, what would you have deliberated? And how is the, I, I ask myself, this is a, this is, may not be an entirely legal question. How is the cabinet waiting to receive the recommendation and the re recommendation is received and it immediately uh, uh, approves it? Should not the government deliberate it? Should there not be a cabinet note based on the recommendation? I want to see the cabinet note, it should be placed before your lordship. The well, the, suppose there's a draft cabinet note, but how do you know what the recommendation will be? Suppose the recommendation was negative. Suppose the recommendation said you can only demonetize thousand rupee note and not five hundred rupee note. You have to amend your cabinet note. Was the cabinet note amended? Well, nothing of that sort happened. So let them place these documents. Well, the other question that arises out of twenty six is, if the twenty six is conferring the power to demonetize up to hundred mm. percent. Let's take an extreme case. Mm. It should it not have some guidelines? Does 26 have any guideline? There is no guideline in 26. So you can demonetize 5%, you can demonetize even 99.9%. Where are the guidelines in 26? Therefore, we are challenging. We are, we are saying read down 26. Mm. Read down 26 strictly to say mm. only the government. Let us read 26 first. Let us read 26. Please read 26 first. No, can't it be argued that there's an inbuilt safeguard in 26.2 because the power by the central government can be exercised only on the recommendation of the central Correct. government? Correct. Precisely, that's my argument. The, the, the proposal must, must initi be initiated by the RCI. Please see 26. Yes. Now, what happens to a case with the R where the RBI does not initiate a proposal? Then should the government keep quiet? No. RBI can initiate because the R government has... Kindly see the section composition it's of the, on the recommendation. Section eight. Section eight. Section eight the government. Mm. The government has its directors there. Eight one B and eight one D are government directors. Eight one B, four directors to be nominated by the central government. And then eight one D, two government officials to be nominated by the central government. The Secretary of Economic Affairs is nominated under 8.1D on the board. But no recommendation comes from the RBI. Then what happens? No the government yes, then hold it should... its hands and keep quiet? No, it, it does not have to hold hands. It must ask its directors to place it on the RBI board agenda, have a discussion, let the government, uh, the RBI board take a decision. That decision must be transmitted to the government. Then the government at the highest level will call the governor and discuss Listen, this is what we want to do, and this is what your decision of the board is. Please reconsider your decision. See, it's not, government is not helpless, my lord. After all, the governor is not appointed by the RBI. The deputy governors are appointed by the RBI. They are not, my lord, completely uh, alien to um, uh, uh, the thinking of the government or the needs of the government. But it must be discussed first in the RBI board before a proposal is initiated. Here a command, virtual command comes and you pass a resolution in 24 hours. 